The Lord be with you. Hello and you're very welcome to this service of Holy Communion on the first Sunday after Trinity. And no matter where you may be today, I hope that you feel a sense of communion with Christians worldwide as we gather around and celebrate at the Lord's table. Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us and write these your laws in our hearts. Let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. Lord God, you raised your son from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, through you we are more than conquerors. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you help us in our weakness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the First Sunday after Trinity. God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4, beginning at the 13th verse. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scriptures, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an, an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know 
that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Saviour Christ according to St Mark, chapter 3, beginning at the 20th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the apostles could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him, and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against him, self, and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother, and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words that I speak and the words that we hear be God's and God's alone. Amen. 
Grandpa Jones was celebrating his 100th birthday and everyone complimented him on his athletic prowess and how well preserved he was. Gentlemen, I'll tell you the secret of my success, he cackled. I've been in the open air day after day for some 75 years now. The guests were hugely impressed and asked how he managed to keep up his rigorous fitness regime. Well, you see, my wife and I were married 75 years ago. On our wedding night, we made a solemn pledge. Whenever we had a fight, the one who was proved wrong would go outside and take a long walk. And after 75 years of outdoor life, well, you can guess the rest. 75 years of marriage is certainly a long time, and despite various pressures, there's an underlying acknowledgement there that a divided house cannot stand, and similarly, a divided kingdom will crumble. From the beginning of Jesus' ministry, as told by St. Mark, he's been dealing with divided houses and kingdoms. He's cast out demons, healed Peter's mother-in-law, as mentioned in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, following Jesus preaching at the synagogue in Capernaum, cleansed a leper and healed a paralysed centurion's servant. The houses and kingdoms of these people are divided. The strong man has invaded their homes and their lives are not their own. They live with inner conflict and turmoil. They've been separated from their community and all that gave them security and identity. Their outer conditions of illness, paralysis and possession point to the inner conflict, the battle between health and disease, not just physically, but more importantly, spiritually. That battle and interior conflict has been around since Adam and Eve separated themselves from God and hid among the trees of the garden. It is seen in today's Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel, where Israel wants a king so it can be like all the other nations, forgetting that it has a unique calling, that it's to be different from other nations, that it is through Israel, the people of God, that God will act for the benefit of all people. This division and inner conflict is a reality of today's world and our lives. A marriage divided is a divorce. A nation divided results in vitriolic politics and in the extreme civil war. An economy divided yields poverty and injustice. A community divided becomes individualism and tribalism, prejudice and violence. Humanity divided is all these things on a global level. Faith divided is denial, disbelief, dissent, distrust, doubt, misgiving, rejection, scepticism, suspicion and unbelief. All the things that make up sin. We all know what it is like to live divided lives. You know those times when your outsides and your insides don't match up. That's what it means to be a house divided. You're one person at work and another at home. You act one way with certain people and a different way with other people. There's an old expression you may have heard, house devil, street angel. Life gets divided into pieces. Behaviour, beliefs and ethics become situational. There's the work life, the family life, the prayer life, the personal life, the social life. Very soon, it all boils down to a bunch of bits and pieces. Seems that we're forever trying to put the pieces of our lives together. That's why the crowd has gathered around Jesus. That's why the religious authorities oppose him. That's why his family tries to restrain him. In their own way, each is trying to put the pieces of their lives together, but it's not working. They won't fit. They've been found out. Their life and their world are neither what they thought they were, nor what Jesus knows they could be. One reality has fallen and a new one is ready to rise. Jesus always stands before us as the image of unity, wholeness, integration. He is the stronger one. He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. He puts our lives and our houses back in order. Jesus offers a different image of what life might look like. He does so by revealing the division in our lives, the houses that can't stand and the crumbling of our kingdoms. Even when it's for our own good, with the offer of a new life and intended for wholeness, it's a hard place to be. It means that one way or another, change of some sort is coming. And most of us don't like that. 
it can be frightening. He's gone out of his mind, the people say. The religious authorities accuse him of allegiance to Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. They project onto Jesus their own internal conflict and division. They've declared that which is holy, sacred and beautiful to be unclean, dirty and bereft of God. Their accusations say more about themselves than Jesus. It reveals the depth of the conflict and division within them. Their accusations are a way of avoiding themselves. It's hard to look at the division and inner conflict within our own lives. The beginning of wholeness, however, is acknowledging our brokenness. Where is our own house divided? How and to what extent have we created conflict and division within our relationships? In what ways do we live fragmented lives, packaging and dispensing pieces here and there? What is it that shatters our lives? Anger, resentment, greed, insecurity, perfectionism, sorrow and loss, fear, envy, guilt, loneliness. There are all sorts of forces, things, events, and sometimes even people by which our lives are broken and through which we're separated from God, others and ourself. Christ is stronger than anything that fragments our lives. He binds the forces that divide, heals the wounds that separate, and transforms the bits and pieces into a new whole. Make no mistake, no matter what may be broken in our lives, it can be put back together by the love of God in Christ. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through Jesus, we are shown God's compassion and mercy. Let us pray that they become the hallmarks of our lives, in our church life and all its activities, and throughout the world. Let us be noticeable by their shining in our behaviour and our conversations, and let us disrupt any rules which block them out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let compassion and mercy take root in every institution, policy and structure. Let them challenge accepted wrongs and disturb complacency. We pray that government legislation will reflect compassion, care and love towards those who find themselves in difficult and painful circumstances. We ask that Christian values are reflected in our approach and that our country is seen as a caring society for all its people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of understanding and all knowledge, we pray for all who are taking state and college exams. In the current pandemic circumstances, we are all too well aware of the pressures and tensions such exams place on our young people. The need to be seen to achieve, the need to grow up while still so young, and the many other peer pressures that exist. Lord, our students need your help, love and support. We pray that you will keep them from all panic as we and they put our trust in your power to help and keep us these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, at this time, we offer our thanks for the results of the determination and hard work of the people of this nation 
in reducing the pandemic effects on society. We thank you also that this allows us to restart our lives, offering hope of rest and relaxation which holidays can bring to our lives. We ask that you will watch over those who holiday either at home or abroad in the coming weeks and months and keep them safe. Teach us to treat your world with respect and understanding, in the knowledge that its variety can enrich our lives. Lord, watch over all who travel and we pray that they may return home safely with a new vision of your will for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let compassion and mercy guard every encounter and drive every decision. We remember those whose lives have been ended due to the current pandemic. We pray for their families and friends and ask that the Lord will com comfort them in these difficult times. We raise our thanks and heartfelt praise for the enduring spirit of our frontline workers and those who are administering the vaccines. May your love surround and support all affected in any way as we look to brighter times ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let kindness and sympathy transform our attitudes to all whose illness or frailty makes them marginalised, ignored or despised. We bring to mind those of our sisters and brothers here in Tullow and in our wider communities who are in need of your loving care and healing hands in a few moments of silence. Let there be healing of body, mind and spirit for damaged self-perception and restoration of jarred human dignity. Let us show respect, love and honour to all whom we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, let your compassion be known among those nations who continue to experience the ravages of war and conflict. We pray especially for Palestine and Israel, for those countries in Eastern Europe, Asia and Africa, where man's inhumanity to man is better known than the way of peace. Let your love and justice prevail among the leaders of these nations and may their rhetoric and arrogance be forever stilled in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray that your love, care, understanding and mercy will accompany those whose lives have reached a new chapter and have moved on to spend it with you. Welcome them into your open and loving arms of eternity. Grant peace and comfort to those family and friends who remain in this life in the strong and sure hope of meeting again in the next life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let kindness, love and forgiveness blossom in all of us as we live out our thankfulness to the God of love. Remembering God's goodness to us, let us bring our own thoughts, prayers, thanksgivings and petitions to him in a few moments of silence. The heart afraid of breaking never learns to dance. The dream afraid of waking never takes the chance. It is the one who won't be taken, who cannot seem to give. And the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wise and loving God, you have created and are still creating a world rich with difference and diversity. You have created all people in your image, each expressing their being and living their lives in valid, special relationship with you. For all this we give you praise. For historical acts of injustice and oppression perpetuated against those we have not understood, for times we have failed to recognise racism in ourselves, in our church, in our society, and the times we have failed to take action, forgive us, long-suffering God. Grant us courage never to let a racist joke pass in our hearing, commitment to insist on equal treatment of all persons and groups, even at the risk of being unpopular or misunderstood. Grant us humility and wisdom to discern when it is that your spirit must come to accomplish that which human beings cannot. We pray in the name of Jesus himself, the bread of justice and the cup of solidarity. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. 
even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Father, almighty and ever-living God at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. And so with all your people, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Father, the creator and sustainer of all things. You made us in your own image, male and female, you created us. Even when we turned away from you, you never ceased to care for us. But in your love and mercy, you freed us from the slavery of sin, giving your only begotten Son to become man and suffer death on the cross to redeem us. He made there the one complete and all-sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he would given thanks to you, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. But this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we do as Christ your Son commanded. We remember his passion and death, we celebrate his resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, grant by the power of the life-giving Spirit that we may be made one in your holy Church and partakers of the body and blood of your Son, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. 
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.